And let's turn to INEC. We have the benefit uh, of uh, the presence of, uh, on the show tonight of uh, the Director of Voter Education and Publicity at INEC, Mr. Oluwale Osazeuzi. He joins us from our Abuja studio. Uh, good to see you there, Oluwale, and thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Let me ask you, breaking news for us, what is the news regarding the ban on uh, um, campaign and uh, for the political parties? I know they've been agitating and they've taken their plea to you. Have you been able to resolve that? Well, first of all, let me say thank you for having me this evening again. Um, yes, there have been a series of meetings today. The commission has met. The is also consulted uh, with some stakeholders. And I believe any moment from now, um, the decisions reached after those consultations will be made known to the uh, public. So I expect it to come any minute from now because I left them at a meeting when I left the office to come to the studio. So, uh, basically, we do not have the news right now whether or not uh, the decision has been made by INEC to lift the ban because there's been a lot of uh, agitations coming from the political parties. So, uh, because of what the law says right here, if I may quickly show you, um, Mr. Ozoze Uzi, uh, the, regarding the issue of when votes, uh, when the yes. political parties can vote, this is what the Electoral Act did say. Uh, under Section 99, subsection 1 of the Electoral Act as amended, it did say that for the purpose of this act, the period of campaigning in public by every political party shall commence 90 days before polling day and end 24 hours prior to that day. Based on that provision of the Electoral Act, is INEC being fair to these political parties? Well, it's not a question of whether you are fair or not fair. Um, it depends more on the in interpretation of any act. And one thing the lawyers will tell you, you don't interpret sections of the act in isolation. You look at the whole body of the act. And look, if, for example, you be kind enough to show your viewers section 26 of the Electoral Act, which talks specifically about postponement and the effect, especially section 26 too, of the effect of postponement on the process leading up to that. So you, t you take that into consideration. You also take into the consideration the interpretations because there are different approaches to statutory interpretation. The lawyers will tell you that. There are the golden rule, the mischief rule, the literal rule. There are all sorts of rules. So the courts have interpreted some of these sections. So you juxtapose this with the words, clear words of the statute to get the full meaning of what was intended. So all these things have to be considered. Don't just take one section in isolation and draw a conclusion from that. Well, you can make sense and that's of what, what the one actually, section of uh, the law said. But because the reality of it, Mr. Ozazewuzi, the reason why you tell politicians to stop campaigning is because of the provision of this same section. So you could also, in that sense, make an interpretation of that section, which does mean that you can only stop campaigning at 20, 48 hours before the election day. And the question is that on what basis uh, will INEC uh, be making their judgment because you shifted the election some of the agitation of the political parties is the fact that there is going to be a one week of inactivity which will detach them from the voter that, will, that have not made up their mind. I think, uh, Sean, you should look at that section very well. Um, when you say inactivity, you know, you seem to give the impression that all political parties do is campaign. It doesn't say so. We have not said so. The Act doesn't say so. And the Act talks about campaigns by political parties in public. Please read that again. It talks of campaigns by political parties in public. And it links it, if you look at it very carefully, political parties. So, as I said earlier, you don't um, interpret things in isolation. You must look at the different things. The mischief might not be what you say it is. There's a mischief rule, this is an approach to interpretation. But look at section 26, especially 26.2. When Look I, at the interpretations. When I'm, Labour talking, Party against Inek, when I'm talking to you, Lua Le, I'm, 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 I'm aware that you're also a lawyer. So yes. I'm aware that you're also a lawyer. So give us an interpretation of this. Are you saying that they can also yes. campaign privately or outside of the public without, I mean, outside of the open air of campaign that they often do? Is that what you're saying? 
No, I won't want to hazard that. I just <laughs> want you to know that there are different interpretations that can be put in any section. And lawyers very often disagree about interpretation. Judges themselves often disagree. That's why you have dissenting judgments. That's why you have superior courts or appellate courts overturning uh, interpretations placed on certain sections of the law by uh, lower courts. So basically, look at it carefully. I'm not going to say co offer my own comments as, as an individual. You didn't bring me here to offer my comments as an individual. You want me to give you the commission's own position. And I just wanted you to take the literal words of the, of the act itself. You, you, you brought the act up. You've uh, listed the act for, for the benefit of your viewers. Thank you so much for that. Well, read it carefully again and see what it says, and you put your own interpretation. Thank you, my learned friend, Oluwale. Um, uh, so let's go to perhaps another very interesting uh, aspect of this conversation. When are we going to get the aggregate number of uh, the totality of the permanent voter card that have been collected so far? Because these are some of the issues. Again, uh, we do not know how many people can vote because the number of registered voters is a different kettle of fish altogether to the number of permanent voter cards. Yes, those uh, figures, the agri figures will be released to the public. Uh, recall, shown, and you're very familiar with this, that before every election, we do that. All the off-cycle elections, before the 2015 election, we did it. Before all the off-cycle elections, starting from Kogi and on to Oshun, and all the elections in between, we did that. And we've assured the public that we will do that. We will release those figures. Which brings me to the other issue of interpretations. In using your statistics, I think you have a duty to put a rider in there. And the issue is the issue of the padding of the, uh, of, the, of the register. We have a much cleaner register than we did before. So when you are discussing in terms of uh, those, use, the use of those statistics, I think uh, we're duty bound to tell people that, look, some of these registers were the times where we had Mike Tyson and Bill Clinton in our register of voters, and some of these people voted. So let us take that in context and remember these things when we, uh, place, uh, when we start to bring these figures out. Can you give us precisely what time you'll be given details of the PVCs collected? Today? Tomorrow? Yes, we will. Um, in the next couple of days, I think we will do that. That couple the, of days might be the, Sunday we'll after the election, time. Oluwale. Sorry, I, I didn't hear that. I'm saying, if you say ne next couple of days, it might be Sunday or Monday after the election. Are we likely to get the figures uh, maybe before Thursday? Uh, we'll get the figures before the election. Oh, that's uh, reassuring, Oluwale. Let me again take you to uh, a very rather interesting uh, aspect of this whole thing. The fear of a lot of Nigerians as to how much of the material that have been sent out initially on the day of election, how much of... Uh, the exposure at those things that uh, have been uh, ex uh, have, have experienced, those materials. And uh, is INEC going to do a reprinting before Saturday? Because we hear and we see on social media where people are alleging that some ballot papers have gotten into the hands of uh, some individuals, perhaps politicians. Well, I'm happy you said that uh, you, your source is social media and uh, you know how we deal with issues on social media and the, how we have to be circumspect when we uh, discuss, uh, when our sources are, are those of social media. Um, in some cases, there's, there's no uniform standard actually, in some cases, some of the sensitive materials had been exposed, in other cases, they had not really been exposed. Um, last night and early hours of this morning, we had to uh, refute an allegation on social media, for example, where it said, I think it was made, made specific reference to Kogi Central, Central District, where it said some uh, ballot papers had been exposed and were being thumb printed in somebody's house, uh, residence. And um, we refuted that. Uh, the stamps, fortunately, they showed um, evidence of it and they showed us ballot papers that were allegedly for the election and the back of the ballot, ballot paper with the, with, with the stamps. But looking more closely, taking a closer examination of that, we found that this is not correct at all because the stamp that, that, that was at the back of that paper is not the stamps being used by the commission. Um, and the ballot is not valid unless and until it's stamped by the presiding officer, stamps, endorsed the uh, presiding officer's signature, and dated. So 
these are some things people might not know the details of, I think, what we did to inform people. And then there was the issue of Kano the other day, where um, sample ballot papers, and your report this evening also showed yet another one, I think it's Sokoto, where sample ballot papers uh, were being portrayed as if they were the genuine uh, article, but they, they, they were not. So we have to be very careful, especially things from social media.